And so since he's talking about uh, righteousness, he's not talking about self-righteousness or imputed righteousness. Because listen, brothers and sisters, you cannot put on what God has already clothed you with. God has already clothed you with righteousness, so you can't put on the righteousness of God in imputation. So what Paul is talking about here is not the breastplate of self-righteousness or the breastplate of imputed righteousness, but the breastplate of sanctifying righteousness. It's a practical righteousness. It's, it's, it's the righteousness that is manifested in character and conduct. It's a righteousness, it's the breastplate of righteousness that, it's, that, that, that keeps the vital organs, the, the heart, the lungs, the intestines. It keeps the vital organs from being wounded by attack. And unless you have on the breastplate of practical righteousness, you will be constantly attacked by the wiles and strategies of the devil. I think I need to warn somebody this morning. Don't ever think for a minute, I don't care how strong you think you are, or how long you've been a Christian, or how many years you've been a part of a church, don't think for a minute that you are strong enough to do battle with the devil. Because stronger men and women than you have been overwhelmed by the devil. The devil's chief tool is to get you to think that you can do battle with him. The devil's chief aim is to get you to think you are strong enough to come out from under God's protecting presence and do battle with him in the open. He has you right where he wants you because you cannot for a second lay down the breastplate. Now, the scripture talks about the fiery darts of the wicked one. Satan is always throwing fiery darts. And the dart is always aimed at your mind or at your heart. Satan is trying to make you believe somebody doesn't like you and them people don't even know your name. Right. Satan is trying to get you all upset about some stuff that somebody said about you and them people don't give you any money, they don't pay your bills, they don't wake you up in the morning. So why would you get your most emotions all twisted up in that kind of foolishness when God has your back God has you protected. God has everything under control. But the devil will try to make you believe. Listen, just the, the, the trick he used with Eve and Adam in the garden, he's still using that same tool today. God is keeping something from you. God is holding something back from you. And so you think you've got to get all the gusto you can. You've got, you got to take life by the throat and Shake everything out of it that you can get. And then Satan has you out from under God's protecting presence. And any time you leave God to run after a satanic scheme, you leave yourself vulnerable to enemy attack. You need the breastplate. You need to put it on and keep it on. Don't, don't put it on on Sunday and then put it down Sunday night. You got to keep it on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Don't, don't put it on just when you're around church people. You got to put it on all the time because the devil is constantly on the attack. And, and, and uh, I, I say this often uh, to, to young members of this church that uh, the people in my age and older, we were not bombarded with the things that children are bombarded with now. The attacks of the enemy on us was, was not as severe as the enemy's attacks are today because we didn't have access to things that children have access to now. Uh, my, my mama didn't have to worry about me being on my cell phone because we had a rotary phone where you had to dial it and, and then it wasn't in our house. It was next door at my grandmother's house and then we had to go next door to her house to use the phone and then we had to get on a party line and wait till somebody got through using the phone and then we could use the phone. So they didn't have to worry about us with that. They didn't have to worry about us with all these channels on the television to make, to make sure that they stay up to make sure that we were not watching any pornographic movies. All, all we had was NBC, CBS, and ABC. 
And then if it was raining, we couldn't get CBS and ABC. Because we had that antenna with that little piece of foil people on the end of it. Somebody ought to help me talk here. They didn't have to worry about us going too far because our restrictions was right on the street where we lived. And they knew where we were and everybody in the neighborhood knew who we were. So they didn't have a whole lot to be concerned about. But now, these children stay up till 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning watching their iPads that we pay for. And all of the stuff that they have to be bombarded with by the devil are provided with, for them by us because they don't have any money. So we give them expensive ways to disobey God. We have invented, the scripture says in, the, in, in Genesis, every imagination was only evil continually. When they couldn't think of anything evil to do, they would invent something evil to do. And all of the, 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 the wiles and schemes and strategies of the devil that are at work in the world today, we have to constantly pray, not only for ourselves, but for our children, for our grandchildren, that God would keep us from the evil one because Satan's fiery darts are still wicked. And here's what happens when you take off the breastplate of righteousness. When you lack the breastplate of righteous, righteousness, it robs you of spiritual joy. Listen, if Satan can mess with your mind, if Satan can mess with your emotions, Satan can mess with your joy. Because a whole lot of the emotional problems and psychological problems that people are having doesn't have anything to do with nothing else but they're being attacked by the enemy. The devil is attacking them in their minds. He's attacking them in their emotions. And if he can get you stirred up in your minds and in your emotions, he can rob you of spiritual joy. Especially when you ought to be doing something that you're not doing Satan will come in, take the breastplate from you, and steal your joy. It happened to King David. When he should have been on the battlefield with his men, but he was on his rooftop watching a woman take a bath. And when he saw that woman Bathsheba, he decided he'd have, he had to have her. He took her to himself, but her husband was where David should have been, on the battlefield. Then he calls Uriah in from the battlefield and, and tries to get Uriah to go in to his wife. But Uriah is more honorable than David and he would not go in to his wife. And then he tries to get him drunk and Uriah has more honor drunk than David has sober. And he would not go in and have sexual relations with his wife. He sends him back to the battlefield, tells the general to put him in the front of the battle, make sure that he's killed. And he is killed in the battle, and David thinks that his sin has been swept under the rug. But then Nathan the prophet comes with raised finger and tells him a little story. And when he gets to the end of the story, he says, oh, king, you are the man. And David, in penitent consciousness, falls on his knees and says, have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercy, blot out. All my transgressions against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. And then David says this, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And sisters and brothers, when you take off the breastplate for a minute, it robs you of spiritual joy. But not only will, will taking off the breastplate rob you of joy, It'll rob you of spiritual fruit. Listen, you can't do anything in your strength. Because if it's done in your strength and not in God's strength, it may be fruit, but it's not spiritual fruit. And God is not going to get glory out of anything that you do for your glory. You, you don't have to take my word for that. The landscape is littered with the wreckage and the carnage of men and women who thought that they were pleasing God, but in the end, they were only bringing glory to themselves. And God will not allow you to get glory that belongs to him. 
that there's, there, there's dead bodies all over the ground of people who thought that they could do it in their strength and in their power. And, and listen, God will move out of your way and let you get praise and let you get applause because it's all about you. But when it's all about him, you don't mind standing in the background. Listen, this, 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 this just came in my mind. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I, not, not during this pandemic, of course, but, but before then, I've, I've been invited to preach all across this country in churches and pulpits all across this country. And every church I go in, uh, uh, first of all, I can't preach with a microphone in my hand. I can't, I can't, and a whole lot of preachers do that really well. I, I, I'm envious of preachers who can do that. They preach with the mic in their hand, and that just looks so pretty to me. I just wish I could do that. But, but I got to, I, I don't know what to do with my other hand. So I just leave the mic on the stand and just, and just stand right there and preach. But one of the things that, that really makes me nervous when I go into place is, is and, and I don't have anything to do with that. That's their church. They can do whatever they want to do. But I want a full wooden pulpit surrounding me so that most of me is hidden when I preach. Uh, because I don't want me to be seen. I want Christ to be seen. I feel, I feel naked behind these plexiglass pulpits. And, and that's, that pastors do what they want to do. You can have no glass on there if you want. But, but I need to be hidden uh, as much as me ca that can be hidden needs to be hidden because when I think about I have a treasure but it's in an earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not Terry Anderson. Hide me behind the cross so that when I stand up to preach, they will not see me but Jesus Christ. Because I don't want fruit that belongs to God. I want God to get all the glory. But when you take off the breastplate, you're robbed of spiritual joy. You're robbed of spiritual fruit. And then lastly, brothers and sisters, if you remove that breastplate, it robs you of spiritual rewards. Uh, Jesus said in the Revelation, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Paul said, my greatest fear and this also is my greatest fear, that when I have preached to others, I myself should become castaway. I don't want to be disqualified for the prize that I helped others to gain. And so I want always to have on, I want you always to have on the breastplate of righteousness. And listen, the breastplate that is righteousness. You, you need to have it on with you everywhere you go because you will be shot at with the fiery darts from the enemy. And listen, if Satan ain't shooting at you, it's probably because you ain't doing nothing. If Satan is not bothering you, it's probably because you ain't bothering him. But the minute you make up your mind that you're going to live for God and you're going to do what it is that God wants you to do, you will come under satanic assault. But if you have on the girdle of truth and the breastplate of righteousness, you can stand against the fiery darts of the enemy.